Two days ago, July 27, 1890, I shot at my chest with a revolver. Now I lay on my deathbed with my brother Theo, who is wholly funded and encouraged my artistic endeavors by my side. I know that the end is fast arriving. I can see my tombstone. It reads, Here lies Vincent Van Gogh, March 39, 1853 through July 1890. Suddenly, there is a flash of light in the corner of my room, and the man slips out of thin air. He tells me that I am the great artist Vincent Van Gogh, and that he has traveled back from a distant future to save my life. I am incredulous, but also not long for this world, so I let him repair my wounds. Miraculously, I live, and with my newfound energy, I leap onto the man from the future and grab the device that he used to travel through time, propelling myself into the future. Here there is a great variety of art. The public seems much more open to experimentation than they were in my time. I see genres of art that have expanded on my original philosophies, expressionism, fauvism, and modernism. I see traces of my personality in the works of William de Kooning, Henry Matisse, and the non-figurative artist Howard Hodgkin and Jackson Pollock. To my surprise, my life is documented here in perfect detail. I pick up a Van Gogh biography and reminisce about my youth in Holland. I remember how scared I was to leave home when the time came for me to attend boarding school, and my time at the Hay Gallery when I was 16. I abandoned art dealing after being transferred to London, then Paris two years later, and decided to follow my father's footsteps and become an evangelical preacher. As it would turn out, this decision would have a greater influence on my art than my years at The Hague. I formed a ministry with the miners at Bonnage, Belgium, living among the impoverished and the destitutes. I became fascinated with them, with what I saw as the real laboring population of the world. I was inspired to document their lifestyles. It was then that I realized that I had to leave something behind for the world. Perhaps I could give these people happiness by creating beauty. Though I had no art education or confidence in my own ability, I stayed in Belgium to pursue what would become an unsuccessful career in art. In 1886, I left to see Theo in Paris, where I studied with Cormand, Monet, Gauguin, and Pissarro, and adopted the sensibilities of the Impressionist painters. My nervous disposition made it difficult for others to deal with me, however, and long nights and days began to affect my health. I chose to go south to Arles to found a school of arts with my contemporaries. Only Gaguin joined me, however, and before the end of 1888 he had left after I pursued him with a writ, cutting off a portion of my own ear. I fell into frequent bouts of madness and was sent to the asylum at saint Remy. Here I painted some of the most famous pieces, including the Starry Night. I left saint Remy in 1890, feeling much better under the watch of Dr. Gatchet. Things didn't stay good, however. Within two months following a relapse of illness and depression, I had fatally shot myself. I am alive, though, and in the future that will accept my art. There is one artist, Robert Spring, who I see has embraced my active brushstrokes and vivid colors. I believe I will continue painting now that I have learned from my past and have these new artists to admire.